Okay, I've, heard of I've heard of Stroke Awareness Oregon and um, got to meet Keith last year. No, um, I want to talk about sex. You call me so we'll get you. No. Yes, you, Mom. I'm going to talk about for a while. Um, shoot. It's but, not gone. It's, yeah. Sorry. I'm so sorry, bud. Could you mute yourself there for a second? Joey, can you mute? Um, no, that. No, that was oh, who needs muting, Keith? The um, gosh darn it! Why can't I remember his first name? It's not Joe. It's John. It's not John. What? What's your first name again? Uh, I. I'm so sorry. Mr. Oh, Bidditch. No. Oh. Jack. Jack. <laughs> hey, you would have gotten it, Keith. <laughs> We're going to okay, there. Jack, Thank I you. Just, yeah, I just muted you, Jack, but let me know if you want to talk. Thank you. Now, now go ahead, Kay. Oh, anyway, I just um, have wanted to join in. I actually work at a rehabilitation center in Santa Barbara and got to meet Keith and actually have him on one of our programs uh, a year ago and have just been so completely amazed by Stroke Awareness Oregon and the Yes You Can book and um, all you have on online. Many of those things I share with people in our area. So um, anyway, that's why I'm here. Well, are you with Santa Barbara Rehab? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. A great facility. I'm very familiar with it. And cool. And we'll send you more stuff if you'll just reach out to to me or Keith or somebody and give us a mailing address. Will do. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, great to have you, Kay. Thank you. Uh, good to see you too. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're going to kick this thing off. So everybody, thank you all of you for coming on uh, we appreciate each and every one of you, as you know. Oh, Harold! Oh my gosh, Lionel! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm you know, gonna, it's my stone brain taking second. over, Keith. I'm so sorry. I'm so happy to see Harold. I know. We, we said that once, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time, Lane. Uh, okay, Beth, I'm gonna zip oh, it. Beth. Hey, Beth. Hey. <laughs> all right so uh again once again we just really appreciate everybody for coming on uh these are very very important and we do record them so if anybody has anything to say just know that we share these with other stroke survivors in the community and i've said this many times before but we put it out on our email list and and stuff so that people who need this help who cannot come to these meetings are always welcome. And uh, we want we want to help people continue to grow and know that they can get better after stroke. And so that's what we're doing. And uh, anyway, uh, you guys are all amongst friends. So if you have something to say, um, just know that we all have similar, similar situations, okay? And there's John too. Hey, John. I know Carson. What was that, Harold? No cursing. Ah, uh, no cursing. <laughs> I agree, Harold. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, sometimes Lane gets out of hand and, and Steve Boatwright, but other than that, we're pretty good shape, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I thought Steve would appreciate me saying that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, so thanks again. Now, one thing I like to say, go ahead, Steve, you're going to say something? Uh, no, just that I didn't appreciate that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love it. All right. All right. So uh, one thing I like to ask everybody is if, if you can, when it's time for you to, if you got a question or if you have something to say, I appreciate it if you raise your hand and, and uh, we'll give you three to five minutes or so, whatever. But we like to do that so everybody gets a chance 
to participate and say what's on their mind. Uh, we don't like any one person controlling these meetings, so that's why we do that. So uh, real quick, how did how did the last meeting go with Molly? Anybody got something to say there? Arnie? Good. Very good, Keith. I, I awesome. thought you did a fantastic job. She is a sweetheart. Uh, just love her to death, and she's very good at what she does. Bev, I saw your your thumbs up. Um, yeah, and we we're so appreciative to have her uh, in our you know area, and she's just she's much much better looking than you too, Keith. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would say most everybody on this call is better looking. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't hurt my feelings. I guarantee you that. Uh, um, just so everybody knows, I did move. So I was gone for a few weeks there and it's been, uh, it's been a crazy, crazy event uh, to get my stuff all put back. I hope not to move again because this one was a tough one. So um, anyway. Uh, Where did you move? I moved over to John Day, Oregon. Oh my wow. Lord. Yeah. Uh, actually, Kim, that's where I'm from. I grew up oh. in a tiny, tiny little town called Prairie City, 13 miles from here. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, and then I wanted to share uh, one other thing. Um, I have quite a few folks uh, that I've reached out to already that we've talked about in the past, all of us to get as speakers. And I have reached out to most, if not all of them. And I'm waiting to get some, I've had some responses. I've got a couple of things scheduled already, but I, I just want you all to know uh, that I am working hard to try to get these speakers for us. And uh, that's really key. I uh, also wanted to share that event that we're having uh, on May 13th with Randy Travis. Steve Boatwright right here is going to be playing. His band is uh, going to be playing for that, which is awesome. We love Steve and we love his his music. Uh, and then Randy is going to be doing a talk about that. Uh, I heard um, I heard um, Carol's radio interview, Ralph. Uh, well. I don't know if it was, uh, it wasn't your station, I guess, Ralph, but anyway, I heard the radio interview and uh, we're very excited to have Randy. And I wanted to make sure that you all knew to go on strokeawarenessoregon.org um, if you can and, and buy tickets. Uh, it'd be a huge, it's going to be a huge thing to have Randy Travis and his wife here. Uh, Lonnie, did you want to speak about anything on that or... Muted. You're muted, honey. Oh, I promise to zip my lip because I get so excited when I see you guys. I talk too much. So Randy Travis is amazing. We're going to record it for those of you who, who are not here in the area. We'll be sure you get a copy of that recording. And it's a conversation with Randy and his wife through their stroke recovery journey. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And it's just amazing that he's coming here to help us. I yeah. mean, I am just blown away. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Jim Jim did his work on that. And Jim, uh, I don't think Jim's on here today, but Jim's done an amazing job for SAO and everybody. So anyway, um, and like I said, Steve's band is going to be playing. And and I don't know if you guys have heard him or not, but he's fantastic. And, and um, we just love him. So pretty all phenomenal. right. Yeah. So today, today, we're having our very own Kimmel Kelly Lay Lee. talk to us. Lee, Lee. excuse me. <laughs> I probably okay. said that that way a thousand times. Yes. <laughs> I, Vivian Lee. Okay, got it. Well, that probably Go wasn't that way. What, Harold? Gone with the wind. Yes, gone with the wind. Vivian <laughs> Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My, my dear, I don't give a <laughs> You can't say it because there's you no person. You can't cursing. say that, Harold. <laughs> nice. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, so Kim has been with, uh, at least 
in my experience, okay, I came pretty early on and Kim has been with us since the beginning. Her and Lane started um, doing stroke survivor meetings at the hospital in Bend um, a long time ago. I was going to say a thousand years, but probably wasn't 2016. a thousand. 2016. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, I got some notes here, of course, Kim, but uh, Kim <laughs> is just a good friend of mine. <clears throat> uh, she's a good friend of ours. Uh, Kim was an actress before. Um, she was in the LA area, if I remember correctly. Um, and now she's up here in Bend. And one thing about Kim is, and I've asked everybody in this room many times, and and those of you who, who have come in, you know, have you gone through depression, severe depression? And of course I did. I think most people do. And one thing about Kim is she she never did. Uh, and it's because of her attitude. She has one of the best attitudes of a stroke survivor out there. I'm not joking. And I just love her to death. Um, let's see. Uh, what else did I want to say about you, Kim? Uh, I guess that's it. Um, she's going to do uh, a teaching for us that is um, an acronym of MAGIC, which is Healing from the Inside Out. And so I love you, Kim, and get going. Okay. So thanks, Keith. Yeah. Uh, puts tears in my eyes. I'm I'm very much of a sap. Um, I am I'm very moved um by the love in this room, uh, the friendships I never would have had I not had a stroke. Um but I'll tell you why I I haven't had a depression. At 27, I got clean and sober. From the music business, I went way down. I was on the road, I was on tour. I did so much cocaine and heroin and oh, pot. Wow. You'd never think of that, seeing me now today, okay? <laughs> and um, it took my life. And I came from love and I just trashed myself. I just did. I walked into something that I was so naive about and I lost myself. And you know, a lot of people talk about stroke that they lose themselves. You know, they lose their identity. And when I had, okay, right? So when yes. I had my stroke, I had already lost my identity. I had gone from loving myself to hating myself. And I had to work myself back and it was a long haul. I'm 40 years clean and sober now. Um, Wonderful, Kim. Sorry. Congratulations, Kim. Isn't that great? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yes, thank you. And what it was was one day at a time. And yep. one moment at a time. So when I had my stroke, I had had all of that training. I went from hating myself to loving myself. And I'm going to read you. I wrote a book 15 years ago, and it was my gift to um, actually human beings. But for people, anybody that had lost themselves or had trouble with drugs and alcohol. And I, um, I write, how you view your life. The way we view our life makes all the difference in the playing out of our life. We have little or no control over our outer environment, stroke. But we do have control over our inner environment, our frame of mind, and our perception of the world we live in. When you wake up in the morning, do you find yourself thinking about what you can't have and what you can't do? Do you drag your feet throughout the day? I'm going to cry. Going from one drama to another. Is your attention on all the reasons you can't accomplish your goals and dreams? Do you feel wronged by others and make them wrong as well? Do you complain about everyone and everything around you? Do you hear yourself saying things like, if they could just understand what I'm going through, if they could just do what I say and see what I see, everything would just be fine. Mm. Do you feel alone and disconnected? Do you feel, oh, are you angry, resentful, or depressed? Do you feel powerless with little hope 
of ever feeling good again. And at the bottom of the page, I write there is hope. Now, does that sound like a lot of what stroke survivors go through? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, right? And um, so then in my book, you have to turn the book upside down. And then the next page says, when you wake up the morning, do you look forward to each and every moment of the day? Do you sit in silence and tune into an, an infinite source of joy, peace, unconditional, unconditional love and wisdom that inspires you and connects you to everyone and everything? Are you a co-creator with that infinite source and therefore take responsibility for your part in each moment of your life? Are you excited to see how the day will unfold? What lessons your life is showing you? Are you grateful for all the moments of your day and all the moments you get to express love to your family, friends, and to yourself? Is your attention on all the possibilities and reasons to do? Is it all, is it, uh, is it on all the reasons you can accomplish your goals and dreams and be who you choose to be in each moment? Do you know that every circumstance is loving you and teaching you something about you so that you can choose to express the greatest you are? you that you are? Do you see opportunities in the face of obstacles? Do you have boundless energy and feel empowered in each moment? Are you living in the abundance of your life? This 15 years ago, and I think, no, I know, after writing this book and sharing the tools and magic, that's the, the title of, the, of my talk is and what I've done workshops on is M period, A period, G period, I period, C period. M stands for meditation or mindfulness. Some people meditation doesn't work, but mindfulness. Um, A for affirmations. Can I do a screen sharing? I have something to, a little thing that I can read from, which will help me, Keith. Yeah. Uh Go ahead. If yeah. So screen share. I practice this. Oh, <laughs> disabled participant screen sharing. Oh. So you have to let me. Okay. Hold on. I practice this with my iPad to see if I could actually do it. Because <laughs> I didn't know if I could. Now I've lost my. Darn it. <laughs> I made this for us. Good. Good. <laughs> well, okay. uh, so, give it a try? Oh, here it is. Found it. Yep, found it. Uh, show it to me again. If you did that, it was right here. Oh, guys. Guys. Okay, this is just wasting too much time. So, Good. 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 Down, down at the what you're saying. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to get to show it to you. It was so beautiful. Darn it. Kim, um, down, real quick, down at the bottom, are you on uh -huh, your Uh-huh, it's not here. It won't let, there's nothing to click on. Okay. And if you go down, then it, it, it highlights it, but. Um, yeah, I'm on it. And it oh. and it's just not, that's what I don't understand. It's okay. there and then Sorry. it's not. I'll just read it. So okay. M stands for meditation. Cultivate your awareness of the present moment. These are these are little points of meditation. Expand and interiorize your consciousness. Quiet your restless mind and become still. Grow your joy, peace, wisdom, happiness, compassion, trust, faith, and your capacity to love unconditionally from the inside out. Cultivate your intuition so you can listen and act on the truth within. Cultivate your inner eyes and inner ears so you can see and hear beyond the surface of this life and deepen your perceptions. So that's meditation. And um, that's one of the tools. Another tool is affirmations. Redesign your thinking by re-recording over negative thoughts with positive ones. Like, I can't do this, you know, I'm stuck. I'm never going to get better. <laughs> Ralph, are you laughing? <laughs> no, I'm smiling. I just love what I'm hearing. I know, baby. I know you're smiling with me. I knew that. I feel that. Um, 
you know, and it's re-recording because we have stinking thinking. It's the monkey mind, you know, and when something happens like stroke, it's going to bring up if you've had, I uh, like you're, you have a lot of doubt and you have a lot of fear, it's going to heighten that. And these are things that it's very important to change your thinking. And um, and by doing it by a- affirmations, I find it very important. I go to the mirror and in the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole and complete. I mean, I make up affirmations that are going to help me turn that mind well. When I start to feel like lack, any kind of lack, I, I recite abundance quotes, you know, um, uh, so, and then G is for gratitude. Cultivate a relationship with gratitude as a choice and an action. Gratitude is a choice and it is an action. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't always think we have a choice because something's happened to us, but in each moment you have the choice to be grateful. And then the second one is, Choose to be grateful for what you have and what you don't have. Think about that. How do we get grateful for what we don't have? You know, um, I have two sides of my body. The left side is disconnected and the right side is connected. And if I get up in the morning and I put my foot out on the bed, the first thing that hits me in the face is my disability. But if I keep my consciousness there, I begin to start feeling a little, you know, I can feel a little self-pity, a little, oh, this is, oh, it's going to be hard. You know, that kind of starts to roll. But if I think about what I can do, simple, what can I do as opposed to what I can't do? So I, and I decide to be grateful for what is. Wow. Why are we always wanting it to be spring when it's summer? I mean, when it's winter. Or when, you know, we're all, it's always the grass is greener. How about just saying thank you for what is right here, right now? It's a, it's an incredible practice and it is part of owning your own happiness. And this, this next one is I for inward motivation. We have to cultivate an inward motivation. We have to own our own happiness. It can't be because I get to go to that place or you know, my husband kisses me or my, you know, whatever we, I get the job or I get the guy, I get, you know, whatever it is, if our happiness is contingent upon the outside, um, then we are happy, not happy, happy, not happy, because we don't always get everything we want, (laughs) right? And Bev, you know, right? I mean, he's just cancer free. Thank you very much. But look at all that. Look what you have to go through. All of that. So if you're not staying grateful for what is and trusting and having faith, you're worried, you're in fear. These are choices. Okay. And then the last is C for conscious choices. And I think of this as developing relationships as habits. So we are all creatures of habit. So if we have fear, we have to practice faith or courage the opposites. This is where opposites come into play. If we have loss, we have to practice fight looking for the game. When we have, when we see that we're judging, we have to choose to be compassionate. You know, when we're in doubt, we have to choose to trust. When we have sadness, we have to see it. We have to choose after <laughs> hey, Keith, we I'll be right back. But we have to choose after we feel it. restlessness when we're restless peace there are opposites to everything and i encourage you to find those and then the last is cultivate your free will because that is what we do what we have right now we're all alive it is a miracle that we're alive you know um if you're like me and had a hemorrhagic stroke that's 20% of people that are alive. That's it. That's a big percentage, you know, of dead people from the stroke, right? And yes, I live with a disability. You all know about my left side and I couldn't move and for 24 days. And, but instead of being the body, 
I said, okay, what else? Go deeper. I'm spirit. And I choose to walk the journey with joy. That doesn't mean I don't cry. That doesn't mean I didn't have major regrets. My third year, I cried through the whole, every time I meditate, the tears were, I was weeping because all of a sudden it was, I had to process regret for whatever reason. And I just let it happen. But when I came out of meditation, I went about my day, I'd get on the treadmill. Right? So I will tell you that when I, to turn my mind around by doing the affirmations, I sat every morning for six months on a daily basis. I started meditating for five minutes. I couldn't sit still longer. And then I'd sit and I do these affirmations and I started not believing anything, any, any of them. I mean, any of them by the end of six months. And that's why I stopped. I absolutely knew they were true. And I believe that I understood what, what is the brain thing called neuroplasticity. They didn't have a name for that when uh, in 2000, whenever I was there, I think it was, um, you know, I was four and a half years clean and sober. So it was, um, I don't know, I got 83, 87, something like that, 1988. Um, they didn't know what neuroplasticity, they didn't know that repetition plus um, specificity. And that's what I was doing. I was sitting looking in the mirror and I was repeating positive affirmations into the mirror to rechange my brain. And so we have with stroke, we have so many tools. We have a, so much and a lot of us go outside and I'm suggesting to get a balance in your life that you are also cultivating an inner life, an inner life. And um, it's just a matter of starting, you know? Um, I don't know, how many of you do mindfulness or meditate? And do you do it on a daily basis or once in a while? Yeah, oh, good, no. yes, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you know, if you're doing it, you do know that it makes a difference. And um, so that's one thing. Do any anybody practice any affirmations? Yeah. <laughs> that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many people practice gratitude? All of us, right? Pretty mm -hmm. much, for, pretty much, yes. Yes. Um, you know, all I can say is this for all of us, we yeah. all know that we had no control over the stroke happening. It, it's a tragedy. It affects our it affects our lives in ways that we would have never seen to happen. Our families, it 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 affects everything. But mm -hmm. what it does too is it brings you to deeper levels in your life and and wonderful relationships. Um, so I guess that's really what I, I've been always wanted to share that. Would you guys like to do just like a three minutes of a meditation together? How do you feel about that? No, no uh, time. No, no, there's plenty of time. I say that's a great idea, Kim. And then <clears throat> I definitely want to open up for question and answer yeah. because, you know, people are going to have questions about things. And I, I made a lot of notes, frankly. And I've read your book, um, but anyway, there's a lot of stuff here that is very critical. So um, sorry not to impose, but- Oh yeah, and I'm sure people will have things that they want to add to absolutely. what I'm saying too, yes. So uh, why don't you go ahead and, and do yeah. that? So um, I actually, if you're meditating already, you just do what, I'll put a timer on for three minutes so that we are- you know, we don't go over. I, I have a tendency to just keep going. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, and the funny thing, Kim, tell us this real quick, because you even said just a minute ago how when you first started, it was very short. And so it's going to be uncomfortable for some of us. Explain that a little bit, would you? Yeah, I think a lot of times when we close our eyes, first of all, we are plagued with doing it right. <laughs> we want to do it right. And um, all I can say is whatever happens is your perfect meditation. 
That's what I know. You know, I'm going to give you a tool. I'm going to, we're going to do a mantra based meditation. It's the, and we can just say, I am peace. Keep it very, very simple. And what that means is as we breathe in, in our natural breath, we're not trying to do anything, you know, spectacular. We're just going to breathe in and we're going to say, I am peace. And we're going to breathe out. Or we could do, I am peace when we breathe out. I like that better. I am. And as we breathe out, peace. So you attach the mantra to your breath. And the reason we do that is because we have a brain and it likes to think. It is the nature of the brain. It thinks. And usually the brain is either in the past or the future. Future, we have anxiety. Thinking ahead, that brings on anxiety. Mm -hmm. Past thinking can bring on regret. Um, or it can just get you thinking about, well, what was, what was that recipe? And I was going to, you know, I mean, you, our brain just likes to think. So what we want to cultivate this moment, this present moment right now, because this is where all choice is. And a lot of us don't know when we're in the present moment. And if we do it with our eyes closed, we have a better chance when our eyes are open to be able to bring ourselves back when we start to have these emotions, these feelings that take us by surprise or their old friends. <laughs> Anxiety can be an old friend. You know, um, you don't realize how some of these emotions, because they're there, they're, you know what it is. So what you just said, when you get still, and we're just going to just be here, right here, right now, it can bring on a nervousness. And we can start to feel like, uh-oh, just anything like that. So if we attach it to just something that we're going to just say up and down, and it'll only, and we're going to place our consciousness, we're going to lift our eyes, and then we're going to close them. And we're going to just place, I call it the gaze right here. It's called the spiritual eye. And we're going to turn our hands up because I like that it's open. Remember, I'm not the be end all of meditation. There are many forms and many ways, and I always want you to find your way. So Harold, do you usually do it like this, love, when you meditate? No. Yes? Okay, perfect. Um, I usually say it's right down by your side, just so you can be just very relaxed. And so we're just gonna start and just keep it simple. If your head starts thinking, go back to I am peace, okay? So here we go. All right. So we're lifted up and I'm not going to lead you at all. Just go into I am.
and come out. So tell me, anybody just share something with me if they, what happened to them? Hey, hey Kim, this is Arnie. Hi, Arnie. You know, Hello, one thing that, Hello, Harold. One thing that intrigued me about what you said is about depression, you know, going through depression. You know, I always thought I was a mentally tough individual, but I went through some, after my stroke, I went through some severe depression and it kicked my butt. And I just didn't know how to get out of it. You know, I went on medicine and if it wasn't for the medicine, you know, I wouldn't know where I'd be. So I'd be curious, how did you, how did you, you know, up and up here, how did you uh, change your thinking? Well, as I said, I had already had an understanding of mind over matter. I had already been practicing. I'm a yogi. I've been meditating on a daily okay. basis, morning and night. I have a connection with a God, you know, that that is, is I chose in meditation. When I came out of meditation, one of my first meditations after the, I had my stroke, I got the information that I was going to take the journey with joy. And I just was determined. I wasn't going to lose my spirit. Okay. I already lost myself, you see. So yeah. I think, Ernie, what you said about medicine, um, you know, when what depression is, is untreated sadness. So you had this sadness and then you had this sadness and it just, you kept getting sadder. And you went, I always think of cup, and you went down to the bottom. So you needed a doctor's help to give you something because it's chemical, chemical after that. Oh, absolutely. The way we think changes our brain, right? That's I mean, I, that. was, I was always a, a, a guy that was, you know, the glass, glass was always half full, not half empty. Yeah. But it's okay. But Are I, you still depressed, honey? Uh, you know, Kim? I don't, I haven't, I've been on my medicine for four years now. I haven't been off of it. So I don't well, know. Well, nobody takes you off medicine. May I say doctors, put I agree, you on medicine, but they don't take you off. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of scared about going off of it. Okay. But here's the great news. If you go off of it, you must do it with a doctor. You must, oh, yeah. I want to go off of it and you'll go off of it little by little. And here's the beauty. If you can't handle it, Arnie, you go back on the medicine. I know. So there's nothing to fear here, but you don't do it by yourself. That's you know, the uh, you know, one some I've talked to my family about this. And um, you know, I am at such a good point in my life with my recovery. I really you know, I have a great life. So why why stop what I'm doing? You know, the medicine is really helping me out. <laughs> well, then and, maybe uh, you're not ready to go off of it, honey. I mean, th there's no wrong here. The wellness, I mean, this is what I was saying, you know, it's about our own individual wellness. There is no right way. There's only your recovery. If right, you have right. guilt or you feel badly about the medicine, well, then talk to your doctor. Don't make it a big deal, whether you're on it or you're off of it. You needed it back then. Maybe you still need it. Can I tell you, I'm on medicine, not for depression. I have a terrible, my, my stroke was in the um, sensory and motor skill part of my brain. They put me on gab gabapentin and in the, when I was in the hospital. Then I changed it to pregabalin because it made me too tired. But it is when I, I've been trying to go off of it three or four times. When I go off of it, I start to feel that I can't describe it except to show you. I start to get these terrible sensory all screwed up under my eye and it's really right. bad. And right. so it's like my doctor says, well, then freaking go back on. And I go, yeah, like, what's the big deal? I'm not using it to get high. Right. I, you know, I know the difference. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, you know, I'm not overdoing it. I'm, but it's helping me. And I had to accept that. But yeah. I did try at least three or four times to get off of it, and I'll try again. Okay. J just yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna every morning. I'm gonna start doing some of the things you suggested. I'm gonna change my routine every morning and start doing a little bit of meditation, and you know, get into get into the mindset life. of, you know, be happy with where you're at. Arnie, you, know? you call me. Arnie, you call me, and I'll I help will. you 
put together a regimen that you can do just from the things I talked about. Hmm. Okay, I will. Okay. Okay. Please. Uh, I'll tell oh. you real quick. Uh, I, I just want to chime in here and I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to, to visit too. So uh, if anybody has anything to say, I want you to raise your hand, but there's, I, I've got, Kim, I've got a, a page of notes that I took. A couple of things though that were apparent to me is you talked about training and training from being clean and sober. So you knew already the how you had to take it one day at a time and and you you know you went through that and that was huge but then what what arnie just asked you and it brought me back to the choice and action in the g of magic right the gratitude having a choice and action and own your own happiness in the um inward motivation and those are critical pieces critical pieces and arnie uh, oh yeah, Kim, Kim. Can you can you send us a flyer that has the thing that you tried to find? All right, I'm sharing this right now, and this is why I, I just found the thing on the bottom. I'm just going <laughs> to screen share just so you can see of this beautiful thing I did, and I'll send it to whoever wants it. So here it is. Share. All if right. You send it to me, Kim. Then yes, I'll, I will. I'll... Do you see it? Yeah. Yes. So it's, <laughs> I've lost the meeting though, but I, is it on there? Yeah, it's on there, Kim. So, yeah. okay, so it's all of this stuff. I do have this and I'll send this page, of course. Awesome. And everybody, I'm going to stop the share because I can't see anybody. But yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> um, but anybody that wants it, of course, and anybody wants to call me and uh, I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm here for you, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Now let's let's take a few minutes. We're at quarter till. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to ask any questions that they may have. Does anybody have something they want to say or ask or anything, Ralph? Yeah, I, I I'll tell you. Kim and I have done a couple interviews for the radio, and we, I acted as the guinea pig. Forgive the pun, but um, we did life coaching med meditation for a few sessions and uh one of the things that i have a difficulty with especially for those of you uh those of you who know me i do too much i don't <laughs> i don't stop very often and i have a difficult time recognizing that i've got so much to do but look what i've accomplished this meditation has brought me into um hey i had a great day today and that three minutes we just did reminded me of everything I accomplished today. And I have a very hard time recognizing that myself. And I, it, these, it helps. It helped me a lot in recognizing uh, the meditation at night, what I've accomplished for the day since we started those sessions, God, back in October, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if you want to listen to them, by the way, they're on at 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. on Stroke Warrior Radio this week. So you can listen to them. But those things are brought to light. I, I, it just amazes me how many new things I recognize each time I do this meditation. It's It's been awesome for me. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, let me say this, Keith, just... Yeah, um, and then real, real quick, real wait. quick, I want to make sure I keep keep track so beth is next kim so okay. beth is next um just as far as meditation not everybody has a you know has a god in their life and it could be not called god too but an infinite source something that's greater than yourself so met, so the mindfulness is really good too because i feel like in the beginning what we just did was basically mindfulness we were bringing ourselves right. back to this moment right here and if you have if, if you have god in your life you can expand it out to connecting with that higher power, to opening up. And even if you don't, you can open up to peace, joy. I mean, there's so many things that can be done with meditation. It's, you know, uh, it, it's just so incredibly powerful. And anybody that would want me to start them with a meditation, I would be so, it's my favorite thing to do, clearly. So I just want to say that. Okay, Keith. Beth, go ahead. 
Okay, I just would love, Kim, for you to explain your um relationship with deep breathing. I just found my breath, and ah. it's amazing. Yeah. But, and you do have an experience? Oh, yes. I mean, I think breathing is everything. Mm -hmm. And when I'm meditating, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I just, I watched Lane, you got to watch that guy um, that came to speak at Sparks Rehab. It is so good. Um, you sent it to him. Is it on the Stroke uh, Stroke Awareness Oregon uh, website? You're muted. Keith, why don't I? So we have a great breathing um, video that we just did. Somebody. This if, guy. If I send it to you, will you send it out to everyone? Or yeah. maybe Joey. You know, yeah, he's a physical therapist, but, you know, he's like, I'm not about meditation or anything, but he talks about breath. I'm a singer. So I do have a, I have a relationship with breath based on singing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, I teach singing and I, and I, you know, talk about, and he was great though, because he just really about, because if you're not breathing correctly, but see, I practice also in my meditation, I do Kriya Yoga and there's, and it's a pranayama. I can't go into it, but it's, so I do have a relationship with my breath and I'm constantly thinking about the diaphragm and breathe mm -hmm. in at the drain, not up here at the lungs. We don't really breathe from the lungs, but mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend you all watching this PT. He is magnificent. I watched the mm -hmm. whole thing and um, he will really give you some things to think about and really start to learn about breathing correctly so awesome mm. that, that so is that is available on the sao site mm. okay. i don't um joey's on here joey i don't know if we posted it yet do you know i'm not sure if it's posted yet but i can send it to everybody okay great yeah it's it's, it's really it's good watching yes okay thank you joey uh -huh. any other any other questions uh before we keep going here or anybody have anything to say what it felt like <laughs> when they meditated? That's what I really was asking. One, one, thing, I, one thing I was going to say too, Kim, is that the, the three minutes seemed like a lifetime uh, <laughs> to me. Did anybody else experience that? Yeah. So it just seemed like a long time. So can you explain a little bit about that? Maybe well, take I can say that it probably was longer than three because... I was, I, I'm, I know time and I went down and looked and I hadn't start, I didn't hit my timer. So oh. I believe it was longer than three and I apologize for that. <laughs> um, so, but still three minutes, you know, if you're not a meditator and you're not used to it, it can seem long. And yeah. um, I mean, I could have started this out with guiding you. I'm not one for guided meditation. And I, I will always say to you guys, um, Sure, you can go and get a guided meditation, but really, if you learn to sit still, even if it's just visualizing being on a sea and you're on the waves and then you just get to the place of stillness, there's something about that more than somebody leading you because you're not, you're not cultivating a relationship with stillness. You're cultivating a relationship with the person that's telling you and guiding you. Um, even in my meditation class, we do 30 minutes. I started everybody at five and we're all up to 30 now. And um, I guide the first three minutes and then and then we're meditating for, for the rest of the time. Um, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. But got to remember, everybody started basically at five, 10 minutes, seven minutes, you know. It, it takes a practice. Uh, it's a practice. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. That's the word, Keith. Yeah. Practice. And, you yeah. know, I, I just, I, I just love uh, all this stuff that you're saying. I've got notes all over the place. Um, anybody else? Before we start wrapping up, does anybody have any other questions for Kim specifically? I thought you did a fantastic job, Kim. Thanks, Keith. Yeah. Anybody else have any other Good questions? Job. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. <laughs>
Cu a couple of things I'm just going to call out, okay? And and maybe it'll give us another minute of talk, maybe not, um, and we can wrap up. But I'm going to say some of the things that I, I wrote just because, um, you know, we all do go through a depression, not everybody like Kim, but a lot of us go through a depression. And some of what Kim is talking about uh, was so key. It's like one day at a time you know, one day at a time. And I think about, cause you know, uh, I do a lot of coaching too. And, and uh, people, their lives completely have changed and they're not ready for that. They're, you know, they're going on a path and then bam, everything changes. And I just love what Kim says, choose to walk your journey with joy. Um, it's a process, but the regret is going to, and she didn't say this specifically, but the regret is going to kill you if you allow that to come in. Well, and, all, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. One of the things I, I, I wrote on there when you were talking was focus on helping other people. Yep. And I've said Absolutely. this many times because when you focus on helping other people, you take your eyes off yourself sometimes. Always. Uh, <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Kim. No, you do. You always take your eyes off someone else. And that's what, and it is. And you know what? Even if you feel like you don't have anything to give, that's not true. You pick up the phone to another stroke survivor or you're at therapy and you'll walk over to somebody else and say, hey, how are you doing today? Mm. That's helping another person. Even if you're out at a restaurant, Lonnie and I love to do this. We'll go out and we will talk to everybody around. Yeah, we had a stroke. And, you know, we we start, we, we tell them we had a stroke and we engage them. And there's such a sincere dialogue. Just having a sincere dialogue with somebody else helps them. It lifts them up. It gives nice. them courage to, to have, you know, uh, to do that with somebody else. Well, and they can see, they can see other people who have gone through frankly hell and back and yes. uh, who have made the choice yes. like you said to get on with their lives uh yes. both you and Lonnie are great um Wait, uh, models models for everybody here seriously well you know somebody that hasn't got a disability and they see me walking down the street or Lana or any of us and we're smiling you don't you better believe they don't think twice to go wow that person's smiling and look at them that's right <laughs> and the water, look at my grumpy face you know um so and i will say what you know what comes out of this is what makes us who we are yeah. not what goes into us so how do we take what's our you know most of us are very reactionary ah! You know, we, we, we just, whatever we, you know, explode or we just have habits. And when we choose to respond, that takes consciousness. And if we meditate, we begin to see ourselves and that's self-realization is where it's completely, because then I know you knowing me, I know you. I love that. I love that because the self you know, finding yourself and what you're talking about there is so critical because we we beat ourselves up. You know, we're born we're born to do that, I guess. Uh, and then and then you have a stroke and and hell, you know, then you go over the fence and it's like uh, oh, so yeah. it's a self reflection. It's that loving yourself That's again. It. You know that makes a huge difference to all of us um, in the world. And maybe we needed that, you know, maybe there was like, I know I've been, I've been working on loving myself for all since back I got clean and sober. And what I can tell you is there was even more levels, more humility. I can see my vanity. It's hysterical. You know, yeah. I never knew I had any vanity, you know, I mean, and it's like the way I look and it's like, Oh, or my, you know, just, just different thing. Envy. I never had envy in my life, but I caught myself looking at a couple and they <laughs> were older and they were walking and they both were whole. And I, I went, oh, I'm feeling some envy here. And I thought, oh, aren't you adorable? You know, bless you. 
And I just said, come back, little girl, because I'm grateful for being me. You know? The cool thing about it, the cool thing about what you do and, and what you've learned and everything is you can recognize those things and then you can come back to who you are, just like you said. And not everybody uh, has that ability, but it takes practice, everyone. It's we practice. To begin to practice and to get better at it. All and meditation, time. if you get still, you will see your thoughts. You will begin to see, you will be shown, you will see your actions. You will, what happens, you get still and there is things that go on that you could never do without getting still. That's awesome. You know? I want to make a another quick point. Uh, Kay said, thanks uh, for the wonderful support and connections. There's a great song by Jeremy Camp uh, that comes to mind, Keep Me in the Moment. <laughs> uh, and so I wanted to share that uh, from, from Kay. Um, okay, we're, we're starting to wrap up here, guys. A couple of notes. Kim, first of all, let me just say, uh, wonderful. And we love you. And you did a, a fabulous job today. Um, and um, we so appreciate you. I Thank you. Awesome. And I appreciate you. Thank you for letting me share here at the meeting i yeah. really appreciate it i've it been wanting to for a long time i know it was great um so real quick uh be sure you guys uh if you haven't already get the book uh just say yes to life um go to strokeawarenessoregon.org and you can find that uh next stroke survivor meeting is on uh, the 23rd I, like I said before, I'm talking to a bunch of folks, and and I know we'll probably have a speaker for that as well. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, any stroke anniversaries? Did anybody have their stroke in April? No. Oh, cat. Yeah. Happy stroke Kat. anniversary. High five. How Yay. many years? Five. You, you, I'm gonna unmute myself. Yeah, five years. Oh, congratulations. Awesome. Yes, well, it will be five years on 420. 420. Wow. Yep. Yeah, well, you're, you're, doing, <laughs> you're doing great, Kat. Thanks. It's been a pleasure uh, getting to know you a little bit, I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see, what am I missing here? Uh, I want to make sure. Oh, uh, I just, launched, just launched into the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program. I talked to Steve. I emailed uh, or text and um, he's up up at the hospital right now talking to somebody. What a great program the peer-to-peer -peer is because uh, we're helping a lot of stroke survivors. Um, and then of course, Stroke Warrior Radio, is Ralph still on here or did he bail? Um, you know, Ralph is right. He works his tail off, um, you know, but um, you guys listen to that program if you can and uh and help him uh because he would love to have any of you talk if if possible all right so and the breathing video yes. uh, we'll get well it's a, absolutely amazing we'll get that out to everybody thank you sounds so great much. thank you thank you all right well hey right. i appreciate each of you thank you kim everybody thanks guys keith, keith you're gonna get get that page from us for, from kim out too right what she oh, i'm going to send you guys i'll send um this yes. page well there's three so, pages i didn't go over everything but i'll send them all out to everybody so like what i might do is and I might my phone to, number anybody wants to call and i might try to get with joey and see if we can combine um, that paper and the breathing a video together and send it all out so everybody can get it because otherwise I, I'm trying to manage that and I don't do a very good job of it. So, Yeah, I, I can do work. that. That would be awesome. Okay. Kim, Go ahead, Joey. I love what you said, Beverly. Sorry. Kim, Joey. if you give that to me, then I will uh, combine those two and we can send that out to everybody. Very cool. Oh, great, Kay. So, um, Keith, Beverly yeah. wrote in the chat, I don't know if you guys read it, but she says, we talk to ourselves at the rate of 1,600 words per minute. We can reinforce recovery or stay stuck in our pity party. Yes. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> That's right on, Bev. That's really right on. I apologize. I missed that because I was That's scrolling really down good. As, as the notes came <laughs> into me. That was really good. <laughs> anyway, she's right on. And I'll tell you what, Bev is one of those people uh, that set the tone for keeping after it. There's no doubt. Right, Bev? Appreciate you. All right. I appreciate all of you guys. Right. And we'll see you next time, huh? All right. Yes. Bye. So much. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Be Thank blessed. you. Bye. How do I get